Uh, so I've been involved with security pretty much since the beginning of my career uh, several years ago. I was always kind of the person that wanted to help secure the computers, not just, you know, administer and do the the day-to-day -day thing. And, uh, you know, worked as a systems administrator, worked as a network administrator, and learned a lot about, you know, how to administer systems and networks, always with kind of that underlying theme of security, uh, and kind of progressed through uh, security by basically one of my jobs we had to have a security audit so my boss came to me and said hey you have to secure all of these systems uh, so I started learning about all these security tools and I, I really really latched onto it uh, and have been doing security ever since I worked for a university uh, for about seven years doing security and when I when I started at the university there was uh, very little in the way of security, right? It was 2000 or 2001, where a lot of these security tools and tactics and techniques were still being developed. And, you know, they had nothing in the way of a formalized security program and all of the components that you would include inside of it. So uh, I did the intrusion detection systems, network intrusion detection systems, implemented firewalls, implemented uh, VPN devices, and all of this security technology formalized a vulnerability assessment program. So I would actually go out into the university and assess systems to uh, ascertain the vulnerabilities that they contain and then make recommendations on how to fix them. And I really, really liked that. I mean, that was a lot of fun. It was almost like, you know, someone's paying me to break into these systems and then tell them how I did it. And that, to me, that's a lot of fun because you have to be creative. You have to learn a lot about the latest hacking techniques in order to uh, tell your management and your organization, hey, look, here's how someone could break into our systems or our network, uh, and here's what we can do to help prevent that. Uh, so then from there, I went to work for an organization where I was doing that full time for colleges and universities, uh, and then decided to break off on my own and do penetration testing uh, for a living. So uh, I did that for a while, and now actually my full time job, I work for Tenable Network Security, where uh, I get to use their products, test out their products, still with the underlying you know, penetration testing, vulnerability assessment, and some of the um, uh, you know, network uh, defensive layers in there too, uh, in their products encompass all of that. So it's my job to use their products and then uh, tell people about them. Uh, so my title ends up being product evangelist. So <laughs> there's no religious connotation with the title, uh, although people like to joke about it. There was one incident in particular that um, was kind of the, uh, a moment for me in my career where I felt like I made a difference and that really has kind of helped keep me going throughout without question and I was doing an investigation where someone was breaking into several computers uh, within the university and they were doing it in a very specific way and the pattern matched. and. I was collecting a lot of good information about how they were breaking into the computers and then where they were storing some of their files. So they would break into a computer, then they'd connect to another computer out on the internet, they would download some files, they would run those files to collect passwords from the system or whatever. Well, I, I had captured the uh, username and password that they used to log into one of their servers on the internet. Um, and they had caused such a problem on our campus that um, at the time, the Secret Service was uh, heavily involved in computer intrusions uh, for, for our state. And I called them up and I said, hey, I need some guidance here. I said, I don't know if you guys are the right ones to call. I said, but you know, got these people breaking in all these computers and I've collected a lot of really good information about uh, their systems and tactics and I even have some of their authentication uh, credentials. So I hung up the phone with my contact in Rhode Island and my phone rang literally like three minutes later and it was a secret service agent from Milan, Italy who wanted to speak with me about the computer intrusions that was actually tracking the case. So uh, I provided all of my evidence to the secret service and answered their questions and the, um, a lot of my evidence was used to essentially break the case which led to seven people being arrested uh, and convicted in Italy. We started the podcast in, uh, in 2004. Um, I used to give regular presentations at the university I worked for and educate people about the latest attacks and defenses because that was something that I needed to know for my job and it was research I was doing anyway. So um, I like people, I like to talk to people, so I would tell people about it in a monthly meeting. Uh, and then that, you know, that kind of died off and the, that meeting changed or whatever. 
um, and I was left with this, this kind of void. I'm like, I, I still go out and I learn all this stuff and I want to share my knowledge with people so that they can understand it too. Um, and one of my coworkers at the time was, uh, I had just got a Mac actually, and I'd gotten into this whole podcasting thing. And um, he said, you know, you should look into doing a podcast. And I'm like, what is a podcast? I had no idea what he was talking about. Um, it turns out you just, you know, you record stuff into an audio file and then you put it on the web and that's pretty much uh, a podcast. And, um, you know, like uh, I was saying earlier that uh, I, I really think that um, when you do something that it's 90% effort and 10% being in the right place at the right time. And we were in the right place at the right time. iTunes had just become really popular, got it ported over to Windows. The iPod was gaining popularity, and this is all the things you needed to easily listen to podcasts. So we went to um, Los Angeles for a security conference and decided to record our first episode uh, in, uh, at that security conference. And we were actually in a restaurant uh, and if you listen to our first episode, you can hear the clanging of glasses uh, and the restaurant would move around in a, in a circle. And, and that's where we recorded the first episode. And basically it was a bunch of guys. We sat around, we drank a few beers and we talked about security. And that's something that we would do anyway. And the way we kind of looked at it is, well, you know, we're going to sit around and drink beer and talk about security. And there just happens to be microphones there. We didn't think anyone was going to listen. All of a sudden things started exploding. Um, people started downloading it, they were sending us email, that they loved the show, that topic suggestions, uh, suggestions to make the show better. Because I mean, in the beginning we were just like, yeah, we're a bunch of guys, we're drinking beer and we're, you know, we're talking security. And then it started to become more and more formalized and it ended up, the way I described it to people was it was like this rocket ship taking off and I was just hanging on for dear life. Um, and you know, now we've got, um, uh, I've got myself plus three members of Paul.com. Uh, we do the weekly podcast. We do a monthly webcast um, in addition to a quarterly webcast. Uh, we record about an hour or two hour show every week. We've got a blog, forum, IRC channel, and it just blossomed into this community. And, that, and that's really what it's become about is, uh, is community. But the heart and soul of it all is that weekly show. Uh, that we put on where it's still, you know, even after 146 episodes, a bunch of guys sitting around drinking beer and just talking shop. And, um, you know, since then we've interviewed lots of popular people in our field and got, gained their insight uh, and vision. And we've had some really, really, um, I think, Im important interviews for myself and for our community as well. And, you know, we've learned a lot from the people that we've interviewed uh, over the years. So. Yeah.